so about this far down on your paper, you make your top line for the ceiling for the back wall. That's this line. Then we're leaving the same amount of space here as here. So we have this in the middle too. And we folded our paper in half to find where the vanishing point is. The horizon is about a third of the way down on the paper. There's always more space below eye level than there is above, so that we're standing to look at things. That's the impression we want to make. So there's my floor line now. So that's my back wall from the ceiling down to the floor, from the left wall to the right wall. And to make my ceiling, I just have to... Now, this isn't going to touch in the corner necessarily. Yours might, but it's not something we're aiming for. It's just a, a, a happenstance. You can't be sure where it's going to end up, unless you plan it ahead of time. So don't worry where this ends up. Just follow your vanishing point through the corner at the top, and that will give you the ceiling. And do the same thing on the for the floor. And again, by putting our vanishing point in the middle, we've given ourselves a nice calm 45 degree perspective. So we can plop a, a right vanishing point over here and a left vanishing point over here. So we've got our two vanishing points that go together and our one point vanishing point here. Always when you make these little sketches, you want to make a border all the way around the perimeter of your paper. Back here, we have two objects that need circles at their base. So we need to make an equal sided box back here. So it's not quite in the corner. We'll map everything out on the floor first, like a floor plan, and then we'll go from there. So I just chose a space about how far I want it to be away from the back wall. Now I'm going to choose how far I want it to be away from the left wall. So now I've got a choice to make. How deep do I make it, given the width? So I'm going to make the, the choice for the width first. Okay, so if that's how wide it is, I can't make it that deep. If I take this, for example, as the width, what would that give me? That looks pretty good because it's almost less than half the depth. See, the whole depth would be that much. So, in choosing where I chose, it's only this much, but the full length of the width is that much. Over here, we're going to make a box for a cone, but we can make it a little bigger, I think. So, first choice is how far away from the wall, the right wall. I could line it up with my cylinder, but I don't have to. I think I can pull it down a little bit. It's probably more interesting if you don't. And I'm going to make it wider than my cylinder, too. It's always hard to do something the same way twice it just does goes against the grain I guess we like um, we like variety okay so if I stop it there that's that wide and the depth would be let's see the depth would be half less than half so that looks pretty good maybe a little further out so that's what you're judging Here's my width. So this you can't really do without another scrap of paper, and this is less than half. You'll know, though, 
when you start to make your circle inside, you'll know that that's a problem for you. So it will show up. Let's do our two-point box. We'll start with the corner. They'll always start with the corner for the two-point box. We don't want to put it too far down, though, because if we do, we won't see its shadow. I think we can have some overlapping. Now, I realize yours are going to be in different places than mine, and that's okay. Let's use our two vanishing points for this one now. So I just arbitrarily chose a spot for this, not right in the middle, but over to the side here. And I know it's going to overlap my cone, but I don't really mind. Now we're using our two vanishing points. And we, we don't go too close to the bottom here because we're anticipating our shadow. You could always stick some more paper down below, or you've got cartridge paper down below. Just go out of your border to find it. And here we're going to try and make another cube. So we've got a C now. Just choose something that maybe looks a little too shy. I'm going to go a little here. Sometimes you have to try something and see how that works. And I may have to go. This looks better. Okay, so I ended up going out using three lines to get this, and that's all right. You're just testing out here. This one we drew all the way. We haven't drawn the other ones yet, but just to get this one going. So that's our two-point cube. It should look like a sugar cube. And now we have our sphere to draw. So with that one, you just draw an equal-sided box without any perspective at all. And it's going to have a shadow down the front, so we can't make it too big. We've got to leave room for its shadow to spill down the front. And this one is equal-sided, so I'm going to figure out my depth first because I can't let it go too far. That's the one thing I know. I have to stop it about here. So I'll just turn this sideways and I'll get it on this side. So this is a very small circle, but I got a little exuberant with my two-point box. Okay, now we can start our circle, which everybody loves. And so you make your X. And you cut across the center, cut across the middle, and divide into thirds. So each of these diagonals, you cut it into thirds. And then you know that the circle touches in these places. So we have to go round. And it helps if you think round as you're doing it. Now, the part that can go wrong is here. If you try to touch too much of the outside box. So just skim past it if you can. because it can look not very round if you do that. And if you work really lightly first, it makes it easier.
we'll make our base for our cone. So make an X on the bottom. And we're just going to make this diagram again. To notice that the center has to go to your vanishing point. That's crucial. Otherwise, this, where the circle touches will be in the wrong place. And you have to go across this way so that this is in the right place, too, these two. And then you divide each of these diagonals into three parts, and you have to look at them closely because each of them is different. So you reach right out to here. And then we just draw a vertical up now. Just draw a vertical up. And that'll give us our center line for our cone. And you join the widest part to the tip and the widest part on this side to the tip, and that'll give you. So bring, line your set square up with the tip that you've chosen. Bring your set square all the way down to meet the base, because what you'll notice sometimes is that it doesn't go. It doesn't go to that point. It goes to the side of the circle. What that means is that you're above, you're, it's below your eye level, and you can see some of the other sides sometimes, but sometimes you can't. So we're in a position where we can't. We can't even see right to the center of it. And we'll see what happens on the other side. So this, the direction you come at it from is important. So we'll come down this way. And this one does. This one hits the side. So we're in a little bit of distorted area over there. And let's do our cylinder now. We have to bring that box up. Maybe we can make it tall. That'll be good. And now we're back to using the single vanishing point again, because we're in a one-point box. And where this touches the back, it tells me to go the other way. So you've got to keep your eye on those verticals. If you don't get them up on time, there's nothing to join anything to. Now we're going to make this same diagram on the top and the bottom. And don't forget to go through the middle. And divide your diagonals up into three. And it touches here and here and here and here. Now the top is going to be a challenge because it's there's almost nothing to see there. So what you can do ahead of time is bring up the side. This little side dot, bring that up to the top box. 
and bring it up on the other side and join it across. That way you've got to start and we'll bring up the center because it's very important that the bottom circle share the center. They, they have the same center. Then we'll complete our X from corner to corner. This is very tricky. So use something really thin to do this so you can see. There's that corner's already done. Then the center you take to your vanishing point. This is very important in such a tight box because we need to know where the front is and where the back of our circle is. Then you divide into three, and divide this into three, and the good thing about bringing up the side is you know that you can't exceed that, that you've got to go to that. And then the actual circle itself, remember how to do that. Bring your set square in until you find the widest part, and then that's where you make your line. So the actual side is out here, but the center, which is slightly inside for me, yours could be very different though, so... So the top is really shallow, even though we brought it down. Well, we've got to find the center of our room. So m my ceiling, it met here and here. So I have to make an X from corner to corner, and that'll give me the center of my ceiling. So. I'm going to try and see if I can get this to go. So I'm making an X from corner to corner on my ceiling. Hopefully you have ended your ceiling. Mine's a little bit off, but... Okay, when I made an X on my ceiling, I got this. And it's not in the center like this. So I've got to bring it over. So there's now is the center of my ceiling, which is a little surprising because it's so far back and so close to the back wall. But that's where it is. I've got to find it on the floor, though. What we have to do is take our center, walk it over to the wall, and where it touches the wall, go down the wall. And then go across. And then complete the box by bringing this down. There it is. There's the dot that we're looking for. It's where the light hits the floor. So this is what we did. We had our light in the center of our ceiling. We made an X. We brought it over to the left wall. Could have been the right wall. We brought it down the wall, went across the floor, brought this down, brought the light down, and found out where the dot found the dot that's going to be the vanishing point for all of our shadows. Something you'll have to do as well is put in all your hidden lines in order to make your shadows. Because we need to know where everybody is on the floor. Okay, 
sides, so you have to project all your four corners, so. Everybody will go ahead now and map their shadows. So this is the light, the light source. And this is where the light hits the floor. So light hits floor.